for day 38 today is last friday to the good friday and we want to appreciate god for giving us all this strength to move for all these 38 days and today we will be looking at the journey to jerusalem we are not going to be just talking about the palm sunday what are the things that happened before palm sunday what led to Palm Sunday, we're going to look at that, and that is what we're going to be looking at today, that eight days, tomorrow 39, and the Palm Sunday is the 40th day, and from that day, we are going to move to the Holy Week, we start from the night of Sunday till the morning of the Easter Sunday. And these are the things we want to be looking at the morning of the Easter Sunday. And these are the things we want to be looking at. Is the eighth day to Good Friday where we'll be saying that you are crucified. And then we'll be looking at your resurrection. But before the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, we want to look at what you have done. Those things that happened two days before that day. And then we want to see you mightily today, O oh Lord. As you used to do for all these 37 days that has passed, O oh Lord, go with us in these 38 days. Let us see you mightily. Let us see your mighty hand. Thank you, Father, for bringing with us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We want to appreciate everyone that is online uh, on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook channel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate everyone that is online. Uh, on the YouTube channel, on the Facebook channel. This festive period will be the best that you have ever witnessed in your life in Jesus' mighty name. So we want to look at the timeline to the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Yes, we do celebrate uh, Palm Sunday. Yes, that is what most of the Christians want to celebrate, but that is not the only thing that happens. What happens a day before, which is going to be tomorrow, and what happened two days before. Today is, a, is Friday before the Palm Sunday. And by the time we get to next Friday, we'll be talking about the crucifixion. And we'll be talking about Good Friday. And that will be the last day before Jesus will go on Saturday to the shield. Down, 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 down on Saturday to go and fight with death. So that he will take the key from death and then release those one that has been taken captive from the days in memorials, years in memorial, so that it can lift, lift, uh, lift uh, release them, and then the sting of death will be zero unto us, and then the eternity that is promised to us will be fulfilled because without the taking of power from the death, we and then the eternity that is promised to us will be fulfilled because without the taking of power from the death, we. So that is just what eternity is all about, Continu continuation of our lifetime. So we are not going to have the physical and spiritual death. So let us look at what happens on Friday before the uh, Good Friday, before the uh, Palm Sunday. And we're going to look at tomorrow, we'll be looking at what happens again. So we're going to look at the four Gospels. But today we, I'm going to compress two. I'm going to just put... Matthew and Mark together. They are talking about the same thing. So we are going to be talking. I'm going to use Matthew as the case study. And what, what are the chapters are we looking at today? We'll be looking at chapter 19 and chapter 20. Chapter 21 is where we have the entry into Jerusalem. Where we, and that will be tomorrow, uh, that will be on, on Sunday. That, that is when we're going to say, Hosanna to the son of David. Mm -hmm. So, but then before that time, we want to look at teachings. Teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ for those two days. Those are very, very crucial. And we want you to understand that 
in John chapter 15, 16, 17. Those three days are so crucial in the life of Jesus Christ because those were the prayers and the teaching he had with his disciple before crucifixion. And we're going to look at that when we get to the Passion Week or the Holy Week. So we'll be looking at that. But now let us look at the teachings, the teaching that our Lord Jesus, or our Lord Jesus gave to his disciple. And we want to look at the connecting link between the Pharisees and the Sadducees and our Lord Jesus Christ. The question that was asked. So we need to know those things. It's not just for us to celebrate uh, Palm Sunday. So what led to that Palm Sunday? And then on Saturday evening, we'll be talking about that because it has been written that he is going to write upon that donkey. But that is not for today. Today, let us open our, our scripture to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew, Matthew chapter 19. And we're going to start from that verse 1. Verse 1. Matthew 19 from verse 1. Let us see what is there. Yes, I'm going to be reading Amplified Classic. So it might be different from your own version. I love to read this, but there's so many explanations and there's many things that is inclusive in the Amplified Classic. So let us go. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into part of Judea that is beyond the Jordan. Don't let us forget. Galilee is the last day. That is where we, sp we spent the Easter, Easter Monday. That was, that was where he gave the great commission to the disciple when he said meet me so he, they met him in galilee and that is where he gave the great commission the great commission to go into the world and evangelize that is where we get the power from where the power to hold on anything if we believe in it but now he has not given them this commission this is a this is two days before the palm sunday so let us see what happens. So then, and verse 2, we have, and great tr trunks accompanying him, and he cured them there. He is a great healer. Great healer. And great tr trunks accompanying him, and he cured them there. He is a great healer. Great healer. If you go back and see what most of the time when they are referring to him, basically they don't call him prophet, they don't call him healer, they call him rabbi, master, because he brought in word of liberation from that was different from what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were you they were used to. That is why they kept on attacking him. They have never seen such teaching that liberated human beings. They were always with the law of Moses and the law of the prophets and thinking that those by law they can be saved. But Jesus brought grace. That, that the grace that he brought unto us is what saved us. So now let us see the first interview or the encounter between him and the Pharisees. We are seeing that on that is, was a Friday before the East, the, the uh, Palm Sunday. And Pharisees came to him and put him to test by asking, Is it lawful and right to, discuss, to dismiss and repudiate and divorce one's wife for any? and every cause he replied have you never read that he who made them from the beginning make them male and female and he said for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be united firmly joined in separately to his wife and the two shall become one one flesh genesis 1 27 and 224 then let's move forward verse 6 so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Then bracket, separate. Verse 7. They said to him, when they, Why then did Moses command us to give a certificate of divorce and thus to dismiss and repudiate a wife? Deuteronomy chapter 24 1 to 14. That's where you see that. He said to them, Because of the hardness, stubbornness, and perversity of your hearts, Moses permitted you to dismiss and repudiate and divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it has not been so or ordained in bracket. Verse 9 I say unto you, whoever dismisses, repudiates, or divorces his wife or ordained in bracket. Verse 9. I say unto you, 
whoever dismisses, repudiates, or divorces his wife is neither profitable nor advisable to marry. Hallelujah. And this one, this one is not from his disciple, uh, from the Pharisees. That because when, when, when they had that, the certificate that Moses gave them to give to their wife was done because of the fact that they want to kill him and they have to find a solution to them. And then the disciple was not asking Christ. Wow. Then is it possible for us to marry a, 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 a woman or we should even remain like Enoch? Let us see how he answered them. So then, verse 11, verse 11, but he said to them, not all men can accept this saying, but it is for those to whom the capacity to receive it has been given. So for, it's not all men that can take care, that can take this, but that means that there are some people that are given the capacity to absorb the word of God that to understand the word of god to move forward in the word of god so th those are the things is that he was telling his disciple that no not everyone the pharisees and the Sadducees they will never believe because of what they are prone to law they love the law they want to go by the law so nothing will change them nothing will make them to change unless the, even if god should come down from heaven they will not change because they have they hold on to the law and they're using that to what enslave human being but it's not telling his disciple look at it it's not for everybody to understand what the scripture is saying but for those one that god has given the authority or those one that has been if but that god has opened their spiritual mind to see to see what is in the word of god which is the spirit saying to the to his people now let us look at verse 12 for there are enoch's who have been born incapable of marriage, and there are Enoch's who have made who have been made so by by men, and there are Enoch's who have made themselves incapable of marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Let him who is able to accept this accept it. Hallelujah. So basically, what he's saying, he on he knows that his disciple. Are still not strong enough to observe to, to understand what he's saying, and that is why when he was leaving, we're going to get to that in uh, next week. That is why he told them, I know all this saying is too difficult for you to comprehend, but I'm going to send you a comforter, some a, a spirit that is going to what activate the spirit that will now make you to understand. It will expand your horizon. It will make you to see things that you are not seeing right now. It will give, give it will go beyond human comprehension, human reasoning. So he, that is why he left them that way, so that the Pharisees would not understand what he, because they were, they were there with, with him. So he doesn't want, to, most, most of the time, he want to be separate with his disciple to explain the hidden secrets of heaven but because they were there he just told them don't worry you cannot understand it now until we get to that time that i'm going to release the spirit that will make you to understand that will open you up to the revelation of heaven now that ends the conversation between him and the pharisees and the sadducees concerning divorce and other things oh this one what happened those two days before the Palm Sunday. Now let us look at what happened again. The the children was were brought to Jesus Christ. The little children were brought to Jesus, but that he might put his hand on them and pray. But the disciple rebuked them, rebuked those who brought them. But he said, "Leave the children alone. Allow the little ones to come to me, and do not forbid or restrain or hinder them for such." as this is the kingdom of heaven composed and he put his hand upon them and then went on his way hallelujah if you go to mark mark explained further, further than that for, than this but uh what i said is i'm just going to be talking about using matthew because they are the same stories but you know everybody was, is going to explain based on how the conception of what you are seeing but I want to leave it in Mark so you can look at the remaining one in Mark and see how Mark explained it further. Now, verse 16. 
And behold, there came a man up to him, saying, Teacher, what excellent and perfectly and essentially good deed must I do to possess eternal life? This, this is a case of a rich man. So we have that in Lifticus chapter 18 verse 5. Lifticus chapter 18 verse 5. So, and he said to him, Why do you ask me about the perfectly and essentially good? There is only one who is good, perfectly and essentially, which is our God. If you will enter into the life, you must continually keep the commandments. He said to him, What sort of commandments? And or which ones? And Jesus answered, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear forth witnesses. Exodus chapter 20, 12 to 16. Deuteronomy chapter 5, 16 to 20. Honor your father and your mother. And your, you shall love your neighbor as you do yourself. Lefticus 19, 18. Lefticus 19, 18. Matthew 22, 39. The young man said, I have observed all this from my youth, and what still do I lack? I love that it just happens here. Yeah. Jesus answered him, If you will be perfect, that is, have that spiritual maturity. We need to understand what he was asking from Jesus Christ. When he made mention of eternal life, it's not just for him to cross from this life to eternal life, but you want to be matured in the spirit. You want to be doing the same thing that Christ is doing. And then he asks that question, that what must he do? What is it that he must do so, so that he can move toward, he can be ma uh, spiritually matured? That's why I love the Amplified Classic, that it, it's going to explain it better than just reading the King James or International Version. So it's, this is that, that Jesus answered him on, on verse 21, if you will be perfect, that is, have, the, have that spiritual maturity which accompanies self, that is self-sacrificing character, where you have to do things, you have, where you have to do things that is different from the normal human being, where people, when people are going to the left, you are going to the right. So you have to be able to sacrifice yourself, sacrifice your identity, do things that no, no one wants to do. You want to go extra mile with people. And that is what Jesus, Jesus was trying to point out to the young man. Go and sell what you have. Give it to the poor. And you will have riches in heaven. And come, be my disciple. Set side, that is side with my party and follow me. That is come and follow me. Just the following that Jesus is, is talking about is not just for him to carry his bag and just be walking around. No. Follow is to believe, to accept him, to do what needs to be done as a disciple. Now let us look at what happens to the young man who asks that question. Let us see what happens. Hallelujah. Verse 22, but when the young man heard this, he went away sad, grieved, and in much distress, for he had great possession. He had great possession. So that is what happens to him. He had great possession. Hey. And what and he was the one that asked a question of what he should do. But peradventure he did not understand that. Physical possession is not what Jesus Christ is talking about. He's talking about the heavenly possession. And then that is where the mouth and teeth will not be able to come into and steal whatever we have in there. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it will be difficult for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Let us explain this one very well. Because most Christians are getting it wrong. Jesus did not say that Christians should not be a rich man. Jesus did not say that we cannot be rich. In fact, the, 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 the way to prove in this world that you believe is to what? To be rich. 
because if you if jesus became poor so that we can be rich and we cannot now exhibit the rich the things that he he left for us to have then that means that we are already we've missed it so what he's saying is that when we have our possession more than our life when a rich man decides to look at his whatever is he possessed and think we have our possession more than our life when a rich man decides to look at his whatever is he possessed and think and Christ was hung on the cross so that the blessing of Abraham can come upon us. So if the blessing of Abraham should come upon us, then why do we think we have to be poor? Why do we think Christian needs to be poor before you get to heaven? No. You, if you can be poor in this world and still get to heaven and be poor. This is just the truth. So you, when, you, when God make you rich in this world, but don't put that riches, don't put your mind to that riches. See it as opportunity that God has given unto you to help others. That is just the purpose of having that. God make you to be in charge of his property. There's nothing you're gonna go with. You because you come to this world with nothing, you cannot you won't go with anything. But that doesn't mean that you should not use your mindset, you should not use the, the brain, the faculty that is given unto you, the talent that God has given unto you to produce wealth. The Bible makes us to understand that it's God that gives us power to get wealth. So if God gives us power to get wealth, then why will then do you think that Christians are not supposed to have wealth? No, we are supposed to be wealthy. We are supposed to be rich. We are supposed to possess this world. What is up? What you shouldn't do is that don't let those property take uh, preeminence over. You don't not, don't be seeing your wealth as if without that you cannot exist. Without it, you cannot live. No, when you start having that, that is that means that you have already missed it. You've already missed it. So if you are a Christian and you are in the in that level of ah no, to get wealth or to be to be rich is bad. I believe you have missed it. Because if Jesus Christ Himself, if his clothes can be divided among the centurion. That is to tell you that he's wearing the best attires when he was alive. And when he rode on the on the uh, donkey, he was not riding on, on a fairly used, not grade A, not grade B, not grade C, the one that has not been used before. That is chassis. If Christian, if Christ should come in this dispensation, I believe he's not going to ride on a on small car, he's going to use aircraft to what? To to, to propagate the word of God. Because the word has gone beyond just look there where you are now so don't limit the potentials that is in you but don't now don't use that potential as opportunity to what to arm other fellow human being use it as something that god has given you opportunity to have or something that god has given you uh, as a, a, a caretaker on so that other people can can be elevated from whatever he has given unto you that is what he's telling that is what he's saying the rich boy the rich man felt he, he felt about the wealth he has he didn't understand what christ was saying he thought when christ asked him to follow then that is the end he has forgotten that when people that follows christ they are not lacking anything they left home we are going to get to that where, where uh peter was asking what now what comes to us living our home and he told them what they are going to get so brethren we are not supposed to be poor mm. christian are not supposed to be poor so if we have given god has given us all the things we need to use inside of ourselves to what to create wealth and he, he gave us power to be wealthy so the only thing is that if you don't exercise what he has given unto you and you start complaining that no eh, jesus said the rich man will not enter the kingdom of god so then you want to become poor the fire is good you just that even the rich these people that you think are bad now when you get to heaven you see them in heaven you don't you see people that are not going to church they are giving more they are more in in, in giving out what they possess than the christians People that don't even go, they don't, they don't, they don't prefer to become Christian or to be a Christian. They go out, they give out, they, they, they help society, they help nations. But we Christian, even that, with what we thought we know, we are, we are what holding tight to a little thing that God has given unto us. So let, when you get to heaven, you discover that people we call nobody. You will see them in heaven because 
what God is saying is that when you have not done it to any of these people, you have not done it unto me. So it's not what you hold on to that makes you wealthy. It is what you despise. If you despise it and it will come back more. So it's the one that you have you have, you have sent out. As he said, that God can make all grace to abound towards you. God can make all grace to abound towards you so that you can have sufficiency of all good things so that you can do good work. So, and that is based on the seed in your hand. The more you sow the seed, the more the grace that come upon the seed and it come back onto you. And if you go down to that place, so that the administration of this thing that you are doing make people to pray for you. The the, Christ, the the believers that you are sending your money to, people that you, because God has blessed you with your money and you disperse it, they say that the administration of those things make people to what? To bless you more. And their prayer for you are doing great things. So, Christian needs to be rich. So, don't just limit yourself to, no, God said uh, great things. So, Christian needs to be rich. So, don't just limit yourself to, no, God said, uh, Oh, let's 20, let, let me, uh, 24. I, again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard this, they were utterly puzzled, astonished, bewildered, saying, Who then can be saved from eternal death? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men, this is impossible. Hallelujah. And that's what I've just explained. This is impossible that for a rich man, because I said a rich man will not enter. So, so for with men that is thinking negatively, or that is thinking based on what they possess, then it is impossible. But with God, all things are, are possible. If God has made you wealthy and you decided to what? To spend it on human being, you will see that he will make the grace to abound towards you. Hallelujah. Then let us look at Peter. The, the good boy who knows how to ask questions. But before we leave that, Genesis 18, Genesis 18, 14, that is where you have to, with men, or with, with men, this is impossible, but we all things are possible with God. That is Genesis 18, 14, where the three men feasted Abraham. Then we have it in Job 42, 2. Then, verse 27, then Peter answers, saying, Behold, we have left our all and have become your disciple. Side with your party and followed you. What then shall we receive? That is what I just said that he asked that question because he felt with all these things that Jesus is saying they cannot be rich, you must not be rich, you must not have this one. Then how do they they cannot divorce their wife? They cannot do it. So, so he look at those things and say, How can we survive in this type of law? But now Jesus answered said <laughs> Jesus said to them <clears throat> truly I say to you in the new age the mosaic rebirth of the world when the son of man shall sit down on the throne of his glory you who have become my disciple sided with my parry and followed me we also sit on the twelve thrones and judge the twelve tribes of Israel and everyone and every and, and anyone and everyone who has who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or land for my name's sake will receive many even a hundred times more and we inherit eternal life let us understand that place we inherit eternal life that is second phase in this world, we will what? We will have hundred times. So the, what it promises is not that when we die that we are going to have those things. That is what we are going to get. When we now transit, we are going to get more. So that is we are not going to finish everything in this world. We are still going to continue in eternity. And that's what he said. Let's look at that place very well. He said that and anyone and everyone who has left houses, no brothers, no sister, no father, no mother, or children, or land. For my name's sake, we receive many, even a hundred times more. That is, 
what you have what you you have forgone for him for his sake he said that you are going to receive more here on this one and then and we inherit that is the second part and we inherit eternal life hallelujah but so that is so don't let, don't let us look at it it's all is finished when when you are when you become his disciple no we are going to get it in god way and we're going to spend it in god way and we're going to have it in god way hallelujah and that is what is said uh, saying unto us verse 30 which is last verse for that uh night no, that uh, 19 but many who now are first will be the last then are many who now are last will for be the first hallelujah so that is it another message for another day so don't worry so people that you think they are ahead of you will soon so when you when you work with him god know how to replace you and place you ahead if you walk in his way so that is just the word of god for us so we are looking at the timeline between friday saturday and then before he entered to enter entered uh, his entry to jerusalem and when we say hosanna to the son of david so we are looking at what and what it what took place what happened between those two days as we are going to be looking at the next friday as what happened and before that friday before friday between thursday night and friday afternoon when he gave up the ghost we are going to be looking at the 14 stations from the pilot place to that Gogota. He stopped in 14 stations and we're going to be looking at, at the significance of those 14 stations and why are we and what type of prayer we can render in each of those stations. So it is not that he just pew and then he just go to that place. He minister in every of those stations and we're going to look at that. Let us look at one more chapter then we are going to call it a day uh, we're going to look at let's look at verse tw uh, chapter 20 that is another thing that happens on the same i'm just going to read that i'm going to explain that as i did this one so verse 20 because i mean chapter 20 chapter 21 is what that is what led to that's where we have his entry into jerusalem now let us look at the 20 so tomorrow we'll be looking at luke and john Luke and John. We're going to be looking at it in Luke and John. But today we're looking at Matthew and Mark. So that is why I just want to. And um, Matthew has more details than Mark. You know, Mark is just a young a, a, a young writer that can only compress things in 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 a, in, a, in a very short language. Let's look at verse uh, chapter twenty. For the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out in the morning along with dawn of hired workmen for his vineyard after agreeing with the laborer for a denarius a day he sent them into his vineyard and go vineyard after agreeing with the laborer for a denarius a day he sent them into his vineyard and ghosts are known and the night hour 3 p.m he did the same and at about 11 hour, which is five o'clock he went out and found still others standing around and he said to them what why do you stand here i do all day and they answered him because nobody has hired us he told them you go out into the vineyard also and you will get whatever is just and fair verse 8 when evening came the owner of the vineyard said to his manager call the workmen and put them and pay them their wages beginning with the last and ending with the first Leviticus 19 13 this Romy chapter 24 15 Leviticus chapter 19 verse 8 verse 13 and Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 15 and those who had been hired at the 11th hour five o'clock came and received a denarius each now when it came when the first came they supposed they would get more but each of them also received denarius and when they receive it they grumbled at the owner of the estate saying this man who came last work no more than an hour and yet you make you have made them rank with us 
who has borne the burden and scourging of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, Friend, am I doing you no injustice? Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this man, due to this man hired last, the same I have, gi I have given unto you. And am I not permitted to do what I choose with what is mine? Or do you begrudge my being generous? Is your eye evil because I am good? So those who now at last will be the first. That is the explanation of the last word we have in that 19. And that is what he's trying to bring. And those who now are first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. And Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. He took, and that is a journey to Jerusalem. And he took the 12 disciples aside along the way and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem. And the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribe, and they will sentence him to death. These are his last word, his last word to his disciples, telling them about the type of death that will happen unto him. So all this won't happen on Friday and Saturday before they enter into Jerusalem and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and whipped and crucified, and he will be raised to life on the third day. Then the mother of Zebedee's children came up to him with her sons and kneeling worship him and asked a favor of him. And he asked, What do you wish? She answered him, Give order that these two sons of mine may sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Jesus replied, you do not realize what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and to be baptized with the same baptism with which I am baptized? They answered, we are able. Yes, they did. Sure. So if you look at those things that happen to them, it's even worse. He said to them, you will drink my cup, but sit at my right hand and at my left are not mine to give, but they are for those for whom they have been ordained and prepared by my father hallelujah but when the ten other disciples had this they were indignant to at the two brothers jesus called them to him and said you know that the rulers of this gentile lord it over them and their great men owe them in subjection over them not so shall it be among you but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant and whoever decides to be first among you must be your slave the word slave there is not to be in slavery because god has not given us a, the spirit of slave but he gave us a spirit of sonship but what is talking about is that you must be the one to give value. You see, most of the time, what, what is lost in Christendom is that we don't have value. We don't give value to people now. In the Christendom, there's, churches are not adding values to members. That is why they don't want to go. In, in the olden days, we want to rush to church. Why? Because we are always seeing values. When, when, once you get to that church, by the time you leave church and go back home, you will see new things that has happened in your life. You will see the power of the Holy Ghost working in your life. But in this dispensation, what we get in church is entertainment. We want to. The church has become an, an entertaining place. And the, the things that we are supposed to be getting, we are not getting it. But what is Christ saying? Value. Anywhere anybody is getting value, they will go back there. And whoever is giving value to a human being will be on top. Go and check it. Anybody that gives value, people move to work to a place of value. So when he's talking about you should be the slave, you should be the one that will serve them. You should be the one that will give them the greatest value. If you are the one that is valuable, it's always difficult for people to, dis to, to, dis to dispose a valuable man. If you are valuable, even if they try to dispose it, they will still see that when you don't have a replacement, that place will be empty and it will be, it will, it, it, they will still find a way to look for you because 
nobody dispose a man of value. That is just it. So that is what he's telling them that they have to be valuable anywhere they are. They must produce more value to others. So if you are giving values to people, they will, they will always rush to you. Why are the trunks going after Jesus Christ? Because he is a man of value. If they are hungry, he will give them food. He will heal them. There are so many things that they see in him. That's why they kept on rushing towards him. Because it's because of what he is. He was a man of value. So what, what did that word slave? It's not to just go and carry bags of other people. No. If you carry bags and you are not adding values, you are just going to remain like that. You are giving, you are giving something by, from God. Those gifts that is given to you by God, you need to activate those gifts and use it to give value to people. Use it to, to, to help people. So if you use that to help people, you are serving them. And then from there, you will be the greatest. You will be the leader of all. Check the business. The business that give value or most will be the leader in their, in that business. Go and check it. So if you see any place where you buy things and they don't give you don't see value for money you pay, you don't go back there. That is what Jesus is teaching them. And Jesus is a very good businessman. In the scripture, we have a lot of business ethics. Business ethic that is given unto us, but then we always we we use uh, religion to explain it. This is a business ethics that if you want to lead others, be the man of value, give value to people. If you give value to people, they will not leave you. If whatever you are doing, even no matter how small your business is, if you can add value to the life of other human beings, people will rush to you. So that is what they say. So you are serving them, but you are serving them in, a, in an area of value. So and then because of being valuable, they cannot dispose you. That is just the truth. So Jesus is a man. And that's why I said, I must be about my father's business when it is there. He is called the ministry as business and he hold it as business something that needs to to, to what to work and he make sure that he put all into it to make it work so let us just another day we're going to be explaining that the difference between a slave mentality and a value work so let us just another day we're going to be explaining that the difference between a slave mentality and a value most as the son of man came not to be waited on, but to serve. That is it. To serve. His serving is not as a slave, but he's serving as a man of gift that is giving value to other people. And to give his life as a ransom for many. The price to be paid to set them free. And as they were going out of Jericho, a great strong accompanying him. And behold, two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing, by they cried, Lord, have pity and mercy on us, you son of David. The crowd reproached, reproved them, and told them to keep still. But they cried out all the more, Lord, have pity and mercy on us, you son of David. And Jesus stopped. This is another. This is another one that we're going to find the time to explain. Jesus stopped. We want to look at five things that happens to this man. From the place from where it was, how he dropped his clothes, and when Jesus stopped, and what he asked him, and what he answered back. We have five points there, but because of that, is not what we are discussing today. We are only discussing about the roadmap or the timeline between Friday and Saturday and Palm Sunday. So, what Jesus did. Jesus did not just be sleeping, he kept on walking. If, and if you look, this verse 20, uh, chapter 20, they were still on the road to Jerusalem. And all this thing happened when they were in Jericho, uh, on their way to Jerusalem. So when we get to chapter 21, that is what we're going to do on, on Sunday, then we'll be able, able to explain how the occasion took place of where he now rode on the, uh, the ass. That, uh, that make people to drop their clothes and then put a palm front. We're going to look at what is the meaning of that palm front. What, is, what does it signify? The clothing that they put down, what does it mean? We're going to look at that on Sunday. But, but that is not what we, we, that is not for today. And Jesus stopped and called them and asked, What do you want me to do for you? And they answered, Lord, 
we want our eyes to be opened. Jesus and Jesus in pity touched their eyes and instantly they received their sight and followed him. And this end, this the two chapter, chapter 19 and chapter 20, which give us the roadmap or the, the timeline to the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So do we have so many things that happened? We have we, we, we started with divorce. Do we have right to divorce our wife or do you, is your wife right to have her wife to divorce the husband? What Jesus told them and why Moses gave them the uh, the paper or the, the law of certificate of divorce, which is why which is what we have in that 19 and the rich man, we add that one, what, what Jesus talked about, a rich man, difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And I said, it's not that you should be poor. Don't ever have the mindset of being a poor person. If you die, you got yourself, they will put you in one of the corners in heaven. Because it's, if, if, if heaven is being decorated with the precious stones, Go and read. Go and read that uh, Revelation chapter twenty one, chapter twenty two. You see that they say that there is a city that 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 place is, is as crystal as water. So the, the the road the road is full of precious stones. So if heaven is full full of uh, precious stones, I believe it's not meant for people that cannot even activate their mindset or the gift that God has given unto them in this world. So if God if God has created us make heaven to be so great so good like that then we are supposed to have a place in this world too where we need to create our own heaven uh here on earth and then go up but the only clause is that don't now use that to despise others and don't use that to enslave others use it to serve other people whatever god has given unto you see it see yourself as a caretaker see yourself as somebody that came to this world with nothing and you are not you are going home with nothing so make sure that you you, you make sure you despise all give it to human being to so that they can enjoy so that you can have a house in heaven you can build you can build your own mansion in heaven and we have all other things the children coming to him and he said them suffer them not to come because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them so i want to appreciate everyone that joined us today people that are on tiktok god bless you for joining and people that are on the instagram i really appreciate every one of you uh because of, i'm standing i can't see all the names but i know god loves you god really really appreciate you for joining us and for stay, staying with us so tomorrow we're going to be looking at a day before the triumphant entry into jerusalem what happens well we're we going to be reading the book of Luke and John. So tomorrow we're going to be looking, look, look, uh, we'll go look at it from John and uh, Luke and John. Uh, from that is two people. One is a doctor, the other one is spiritually inclined. So we want to look at the two, the spirituality and the healing side of what Jesus did. So that's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow by a straight student on Sunday when we're going to be looking at. So that's what we're going to be looking at tomorrow by a straight student on Sunday when we're going to be looking at this. So now we have the Holy Weeks, which start from the evening of that Sunday till the morning of Sunday. So so the Holy Weeks, then that's where we are going to have the other seven days. Hallelujah. So we thank God for what he has done and we thank God for sparing our life, giving us all the opportunity to come all the way from the 1 to the 38. And I pray that God will give us that power to finish well in Jesus' mighty name. So till tomorrow when we're going to meet again, I want to appreciate every one of you for joining. God bless you. Let us give God seven hallelujah to praise his holy name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, thank you for joining. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.